If you've ever seen gymnasts on the rings performing Maltese or planche with pumped muscles and their veins popping, I'm sure you asked yourself what that might feel like, how difficult could it be? In this video, I'm going to show you a typical gymnast exercise that nobody talks about. This is the front and back support on wall bars. Gymnasts do these exercises to improve full body tension and you can master them as well in any park, gym or even at home. At first look, they might seem easy, but you'll be surprised once you give them a try. These exercises are challenging because you have to support yourself either in front of or behind your body. So it won't be the same as you will do a simple support on parallel bars when you have to support next to your body when the supporting point and your center of mass is in line from the side. It's not the same as a single bar support either because thanks to the wall bars you can't lean forward or backward to balance out this disadvantageous position. This is what we do in a normal support position on a single bar, whether it's a front support which can be the starting position for a dip or a back support which can be the starting point for Korean dips. So supporting yourself in front of or behind your body on wall bars is not a very advantageous position which is why you need to contract your muscles from head to toe. As I mentioned, these exercises develop the overall tone of the body as well as the ability to engage multiple muscle groups or motor units simultaneously. Developing this neurological process is crucial in gymnastics, particularly for mastering advanced skills I mentioned before. Of course, there are connective tissue and muscle tissue prerequisites for these exercises, but a significant portion also requires neurological conditioning. It's no coincidence that we see athletes who have large muscle mass but lack of strength for different skills, while the opposite can be also true, someone with a smaller muscle mass might be capable of performing difficult skills. Let's see what you need to do to be able to start practicing these special positions and to develop your full body tension and how you can build it up. First of all, you need to complete an overall joint preparation process. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that this process is very important in gymnastics training and there is a complete protocol for it in the Gymnastics Method app. The two especially important areas for these exercises are scapular stability and core strength. This includes all basic scapular stabilization and core exercises, which you can find videos about on the channel, as well as the complete program on the link below. Mastering the basics is crucial as prerequisites because you need to have foundational strength and be able to engage your muscles in work. In addition to dynamic basics like push-ups, inverted rows, V-sit-ups, dips, pull-ups and leg raises, static basics are also recommended. L-sit, shoulder stand and elbow lever provide good foundation for mastering full body tension and body awareness. Once you've prepared your joints and built foundational strength, you can start practicing the front and back supports on wall bars. These will greatly assist in mastering advanced skills like the planche or front lever. The front support is a great supplementary exercise for the front lever as it requires you to pull yourself close to the bar with depressed scapulas while squeezing your core, same as in the front lever. On the other hand, the back support is an excellent supplement for the planche as it also requires scapular depression and abduction, putting load on the biceps which you will definitely feel and also requires significant core strength. With that being said, let's look at how you can build up these great exercises. Since their progressions are similar, I will present them for both front and back supports together at each step. The first progression and also a specific prerequisite is the ring support. This exercise prepares your shoulders and scapulas for the load, especially since extra stabilization is needed on the rings. As I mentioned before, here the support points are still located beside the body, so the core doesn't need to be contracted as much as it will have to be for the front and back support on the wall bars. It's important to perform the support position with the rings turned out to achieve the maximum transfer effect. I've made a separate video about the ring support position, which you can find on the channel. As I mentioned there, the goal is to maintain the position for 30 seconds before moving on. The second progression is the single bar support. You will probably find this easier since it won't be the same intensity as you can expect on the wall bars. However, since the support points here will already be in front of or behind your body, 
these positions are more similar to our goal. No matter how easy they feel, try to focus on contracting your entire body, lock your elbows, depress your scapulas, squeeze your core and point your toes with straight legs. If you can hold both positions for 30 seconds, move on. The third progression is the leg assisted front and back support on the wall bars. This will be the first progression where you will start to feel a similar load to the target exercise. For the front support, face the wall bars, grab it with overhand grip, step onto one of the lower bars and get into the right position. Lock your elbows, depress your scapulas, squeeze your core and use your legs for assistance, decreasing the intensity. For the back support, use an underhand grip, also step up with your legs, depress and abduct your scapulas, lock your elbows and keep yourself tight. The goal is to hold each position for 15 to 20 seconds before moving on. The fourth progression is the assisted front and back support on the wall bars with one leg. Here, you have to do everything similarly to the previous progression, but extend one of your legs completely as if you were performing the full execution and support yourself with your other leg just like before. In both cases, point your toes on your passive leg and you will feel what the full execution will be like. In terms of effort, this will feel right between the previous progression and the full execution, so it's worth making this transition. The goal here is 10-15 seconds. If you can do this, you can move on. In the final progression, you need to pay attention to the following. For the front support, face the wall bars, grab it with overhand grip, step onto one of the lower bars and get into the right position. Lock your elbows, depress your scapulas, squeeze your core, then step down from the bar, pointing your toes. If you pull yourself close enough to the wall bars, you will feel as if you were stuck to them while only supporting yourself with your hands. For the back support, use an underhand grip, also step up with your legs, depress and abduct your scapulas, lock your elbows, then here too, step down from the bar, pointing your toes. During this exercise, your heel or sole might touch one of the lower bars, but do not actively support yourself on them, the weight should be on your hands only. From the point that you can hold these positions, you can set your own limits, I personally recommend 10-15 seconds hold. It's worth using them as part of your skill training or as a finisher at the end of those sessions. If you want to build a shredded physique like gymnasts have from zero with minimal to no equipment, 2-3 sessions a week with a proven system, click the link below, download the Gymnastics Method app in the App Store or Google Play Store, become a member and get access to all programs, tutorials, daily workouts and much more. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more and now check out one of my previous videos on the end screen.